So welcome to the lectures of our system dynamics and control courses. And uh, last class we uh, discussed <coughs> the model of the generator complete model, and it is set of uh, differential and algebraic equation, which is consisting of the voltage equation of the starter, voltage equation of the rotor and the flux leakage equations and of course the sewing equation. So we have seen <laughs> the flux linkage equations are algebraic equations and others are differential equations. And also we started uh, discussing about the exciters, so modeling of the exciters. And we talked about different types of excitation system and different components, uh, different elements in, a, in an excitation system, right? So let us today uh, do the mathematical modeling of the exciter. So we'll consider the DC excitation model here. Okay, we'll consider the DC exciter and model. We'll not talk about the AC excitation modeling or static exciter modeling. Those things you can uh, easily get it from literature because it is available in IEEE uh, websites also. So uh, we'll see only DC excitation, that is the simplest model. Already we have seen this is the block diagram for the excitation system. It is having the components here, your exciter is here, and the voltage regulator in fact feeds the exciter and exciter feeds the generator fail winding, right? And there are voltage transducers which measures the parameters voltage and current voltage and the limiting and protecting circuit which limits the exciter uh, limits, generator fail limits, rate feedback which stabilizes the exciter then power system stabilizer, which is in fact helpful in stabilizing the oscillation in the system, low frequency oscillation. So already <coughs> we talked about these components and let us today see the modeling. So we'll consider IEEE type DC on the exciter, okay? So IEEE standards, that is, 4 to 1.4. Generally, there are exciter standards are there. They will find the model of different exciters. So this standard is 4 to 1.4. And IEEE recommended practice for excitation system models for power system stability studies. This is the uh, this is a standard which is published in 1992, and it only says the practice for the excitation system models for power system stability studies. So there are various modeling you will find. So we'll talk about here only DC exciter. <coughs> so a DC exciter already we know this is, this may be a self-excited DC generator or it can be a separately excited generator. So here we'll consider a separately excited DC generator where we can see here, this is your armature. Okay, armature of the DC generator, and this is your field, field winding. And now the output voltage, whatever it will produce in the armature circuit, that will be fit to the field winding. We know this VFD is the voltage injected to the field winding of the generator. So therefore, E out one, let us say E out one is the output of the armature armature circuit of the DC generator, which has been fed to the VFD. So therefore I can say that E out one is equal to VFD. And similarly here, E in one, we'll see the, this, the input voltage and this input voltage to the field, it may be, uh, when it is self-excited generator, it may be from the armature circuit in series with the uh, 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 with the output of the voltage regulator, or if it is a separately excited generator, only this input is the output of the voltage regulator, okay? 
So E in is nothing but it is equal to the voltage regulator output, okay, VR. So now we have, <coughs> we can see here the different parameters mentioned here. RF1 is the resistance of the field winding and LF1 is the inductance of the field winding of the exciter. And LA1 is here the armature winding inductance and RA is the resistance of the armature, right? And we know here the EMF induced will be equal to KA1, omega 1, phi A1, right? Phi A1 is the flux linkage in the armature. And omega 1 is the speed of the armature, <coughs> speed of the rotor, you can say, or armature. So now we'll proceed. So this is a separately excited decimation, right? Now if we'll write the equation for this machine, first for the field circuit, then I can write E in 1, this is the instantaneous equation or in time domain I can write the equation E in 1 is equal to I in 1 RF1 plus NF1 D by DT of phi F1, right? So this is the correct equation in the time domain. Now, of course, I know phi 1, which is phi A1, which is the flux linkage in the armature winding, it is a, it is a fraction of the flux produced by the field winding, that is phi F1, right? So therefore, the fraction of phi F1, I can write 1 by, 1 by sigma, okay? So 1 by sigma of phi F1, that is phi A1. So therefore, I can write EA1 is equal to so EA1 is equal to KA1, omega 1, phi, phi A1. This is the EMF induced in the armature circuit, right? So EA1 is equal to E out 1, and that is equal to VFD. <coughs> so I can write it, it is approximately equivalent. I can write it is equal to KA1, omega 1, phi A1, right? So now can we express this phi F1 in terms of output voltage VFD. So is it possible to express phi F1? Phi F1 is the flux linkage in the field winding in terms of the output voltage, that is VFD. VFD is the input to the field winding of the generator, but it is the output of the exciter, right? So therefore, I can express phi F1 is equal to lambda sigma of phi A1, right? So therefore I can write it as sigma by KA1 omega 1 VFD, right? Phi A1 is nothing but here, here VFD is equal to EA1, so I can write EA1 by K1 omega, so that is instead of EA1, I can write VFD. So now your phi F1 is written in terms of VFD. So now, your total flux linkage in the field, I can write this as lambda F1, which will be equal to LF1 I in 1, okay? LF1 is your inductance of the field winding, I in 1 is the current in the field winding. So that will be equal to NF1 into phi F1. So NF is the num NF1 is the number of turns in the field winding. Now, I can write, it as equal to sigma of NF1 by KA1 omega 1 VFD, right? So your total flux link is phi F1 in terms of VFD, you know what, right? Now, from this equation, I can write VFD by I in 1 from this equation that will be equal to K1 omega 1 by NF1 sigma LF1. And this is a constant unless the saturation is considered. If we we'll not consider the saturation, the operating point uh, is not considered at saturation point, then we can say that it is a constant term almost. So you can represent this as Kg. Okay. So now, Hence, without considering the effect of saturation, this is your equation, right? Now I can write I in 1 equal to VFD by Kg. So this is 
without considering the effect of saturation. I n one is the free current in the exciter that will be equal to V F D by K G. Okay, K G is a constant. If saturation will come into picture, then this equation will be not valid, right? So let us say then, let us consider now the saturation in the field, field core. So if we consider the saturation, we have seen here, we can see here two curves. One is your saturated curve and the other one is unsaturated curve, right? So therefore, for unsaturated curve, if it is considered the slope is kg, if it, this is this is the figure plotted between VFD and I in N, I in one. So now <laughs> this point will be VFD by kg, right? Okay. So now your actual I in one will be how much? Actual I in one is here, right? If VFD is projected, so actual I in in I in one if is projected to the x-axis, here I will find it is actual I in one. And which will be equal to which will be equal to VFD by kg, which is the current of the field winding with no saturation plus delta I in one, right? This is your delta I in one. Now the same thing I can write it here. I on I in one actually under the saturation case will be equal to VFD by kg plus delta I in one. And that will be equal to VFD by kg plus, so delta I in one, I can write as a function, as a nonlinear function of VFD. So I can write it as F sat, it is a function of VFD into VFD. Okay. So now this F saturation VFD, this function of VFD will be equal to delta I in one by VFD. Right, because this is this term is equal to this term we have considered. So therefore, now if this function I can write it as delta i in one by v f d. Now we know this. This is your phi f one. Phi f one we know this sigma by k one omega one v f d, right? And also we know v f d by i in one is equal to k g, right? And hence. Phi F1, I can write LF1 by NF1 into KG into VFD, right? So then considering the equation of the voltage, voltage equation in the field winding, it is E in 1, which will be equal to I in 1, RF1 plus NF1 D by DT of Phi F1. So if I substitute, these terms, this I in one equation here and phi F1 here in this equation, then my equation will look like this. Okay. So it will look like this. Okay. So your E in one will now become, if you substitute here this equation I in one, so it will become RF1 by kg VFD plus RF1 function of VFD is saturated VFD into VFD plus LF1 by kg divided to VFD, right? So now this is your uh, equation, a voltage equation of the field, okay? Now this is your equation, we are repeating here. Now, if I will Express this equation in power unit. So how it will look like? So this equation, if I express in power unit, so how it will look like? E in one, I will divide this VFD base in both the side. So along with VFD base, I will also multiply XMD by RFD because this XMD by RFD is a standard constant which is multiplied in order to get this EFD term, right? We know EFD is equal to <coughs> XMD by RFD into VFD, right? So now if I will divide this VFD base across this equation, I will find 
and multiply XMD by RFD both the side. Just by manipulating, I'll find what? I'll find this equation finally. That is XFD by RFD, 1 by VFD base E in 1, RF1 by KG into VFD plus RF1, RF1 F saturated RFD by XMD VFD base into EFD into EFD plus LF1 by KG DFD by DT, right? So now considering this complete term as VR, that is the voltage output of the voltage regulator, and this is as constant RF1 by KG as K, and this term completely this term as a function of EFD. So I can write SE EFD. SE is a function of EFD into EFD, right? Plus LF1 by KG, I can write it as T into D by DT of T EFD, EFD. So now your equation expressed in terms of EFD, complete equation, right? So now I can write the differential equation that will become T E D F D by D T, which will be equal to V R minus K E plus A C, which is a function of E F D whole into E F D, right? So now this is your this equation will represent the excited equation, right? Where the input is V R, which is the output of the voltage regulator, right? And E F D is your output voltage of the exciter. Or you can say the input to the failed winding of the main generator. Okay. So now how to find this function? So this function this is a saturate saturation function of EFD. I can say if I uh, just assume this function as exponential, so I can write AC EFD is equal to A times E of B EFD. Okay. So now how to find these coefficients A and B? That is, if I substitute the boundary conditions, I can find A and B. So under stable operating condition, under steady state operating condition, your this equation, this differential term will become chief right here. Okay. So therefore, I can write Vr max minus under the maximum voltage regulator, uh, output of the voltage regulator, I can write Vr max minus K plus AC EFD max into EFD max. And another point I can also choose at the 75% of the uh, EFD max. So both the equation I can write, and if I'll solve these two equations, I can find A and B both. Okay, by solving these two equations. So hence I can find the this saturation function AC EFD in terms of uh, EFD, right? So now the voltage regulator can be simply represented by a first order system with a gain of K. So how will represent the voltage regulator? The voltage regulator is amplifier. So I can consider a first order system to represent it and with a gain of K and with the error signal. So this voltage regulator in fact amplifies the error signal. So I will write this faster system with a gain of K and time constant of TA. So how I can write? So if the input to the voltage regulator is an error signal V in and the output of the voltage regulator is the input to the DC generator field winding VR. Okay, then the dynamic equation of the voltage regulator can be expressed as this, considering that Ka is the gain and Ta is the time constant. So I can write this as Ta d by dt of dVr, dVr by dt equal to minus Vr plus Kvn where it is subjected to with the limiting values of the regulator output voltage, which is Vr main, Vr max. Okay, it cannot exceed Vr max and it should not uh, go below Vr main. So there is a certain limit. 
So a self-excited generator can also be modeled in the same way. Like we did this for a separately excited generator, which is acting as the exciter. Now, if we'll consider a self-excited generator as an exciter, as the exciter, then it can also be made a model in the same, same way. Only difference will be, in case of self-excited DC generator, armature itself supplies the field current, as well, assuming there is residual field voltage to build up the armature voltage gradually. Okay, so it will also take the feedback of armature voltage. Now the voltage regulator output comes in series with the field wind. So previously in the separately excited generator, the voltage regulator output was input to the field of the exciter, but now this voltage regulator output will come in series with the field winding, in series with the armature voltage in the field winding, right? So now how it will look like? It will look like the equation of the exciter, field winding voltage equation will look like Vn1 plus Vfd, that is equal to In1 Rf1 plus Nf1, df1, d5 one d5 f1 by dt, right? So the equation will remain same except the addition of VFD. This VFD is nothing but this is the output voltage of the exciter, which is fed back in the field winding, right? So with this modification, the dynamic equation of the exciter in power unit can be written as this. So if we'll con considering this equation, every, again, if we'll, uh, Again, if we'll derive all these equations, finally we'll get the power unit equation as this. That is T D by DT of EFD plus equal to VR minus K is dash plus function AC EFD into EFD, whereas previously it was KE, now it is represented as KE dash because this term is changed. Now, your Ke dash is nothing but it is equal to Ke, Ke minus 1, sorry. So, your Ke dash will be Ke minus 1. That is the only difference in case of self-excited and separately excited generator. So, to make the entire open loop excitation system consisting of the voltage regulator and exciter stable, a feedback system is used. So, now we'll talk about this stability of the exciter. So in order to stabilize the excitation system, <laughs> we need to put a feedback system. That feedback system, what it will do? It, it is known as rate feedback. So it is a transformer used to feedback the output voltage to the input. Okay. So now we can see <coughs> the whole so that input will be, that output voltage of the exciter will be fed to the input of the voltage regulator, right? So now this, this is your transformer where it is feeding VF to the voltage regulator and EFD is your voltage output of the DC generator, right? Now the question is, it is a DC generator, how this transformer will send the signal because only this happens during the fluctuation time when EFD is fluctuating and when it is it will fluctuate there will be replication in VS and that will be fed to the voltage regulator okay so now this is your <coughs> this is your transformer parameters at the secondary side RT2 LT2 and in the primary side we have LT1 RT1 and LTM is your <coughs> magnetizing inductance. Okay. Okay. So now this is your stabilizing transformer circuit. So if the secondary side, the leakage inductance LT2 is very large, then the secondary side current cannot change from its initial conditions. And in this case, it is zero. So therefore, this current will remain same because we are considering this inductance is very large. So therefore, as soon as there is some fluctuation, this current will not change much. 
because of this large inductance. This current will remain constant. So therefore, but only effect will be this voltage. This voltage will have change only when there is a change of voltage here, right? So that will affect and therefore VF will change according to the change in the EFT, right? So the current will not change. So now I can write the equation of EFT. So EFT, if you write, it will be RT1 in the primary side equal to RT1 IT1 plus LT1 plus LTM into DIT1 by DT, right? Now your VF, we you know, VF is equal to N2 by N1, LTM DIT1 by DT. So this is your induced EMF in the primary winding and this into N2 by N1 will give us VF. VF is the output voltage. Now, if I take the differentiation of this equation, dVF by dt, or d by dt of Vf, that will be n2 by n1 LTM d square dt square of i t1. Right? Now, taking the derivative of this equation, what I'll find d by dt of EF will be equal to rt1 d by dt of i t1 plus LT1 plus LTM d square IT1 by dt square. Okay, now substituting this DIT, <coughs> DIT1 by dt from here to this equation and d square IT1 by dt square in this equation. So here DIT1 by dt will become N1 by N2 VF by LTM. So I'll substitute here instead of this. And your d square i t1 by dt square will become L1 by n2, n1 by n2 by LTM into d by dt of Vf. Now substituting the derivative derivative terms, I'll get this equation. That is dfd by dt will be equal to n1 by n2 rt1 by LTM into Vf plus N1 by N2 LT1 plus LTM by LTM into dVF by dt, right? So now <coughs> I can find dVF by dt in terms of EFT and VF. Just by changing, manipulating, I'll find this equation, right? Now, <coughs> if I uh, multiply this LT1 plus LTM by RT1, both the side, I'll get this equation, right? So now your equation will become N2 by N1, LTM by RT1, D by DT of EFD minus VX, okay? So then we know this equation that if we'll consider this as TF, this is TF and this as KF, okay? Then I can write this equation as Tf dVf by dt equal to Kf dEfd by dt minus Vf, right? And hence, if I'll take the transfer function, or write the transfer function for this differential equation, it will become Vf, <coughs> Vfs by EFds will be equal to Skf by 1 plus Stf. That means this is an open loop transfer function of output by input so okay so sorry yeah. this is your vf is your uh, this is the equation for the uh, rate feedback okay vf is output efd is your input so vf is by efds will be skf by one plus stf so now it's with little smaller <coughs> uh, smaller manipulation if we do let us consider the rate feedback equation like this. So I'll write RF will be equal to KF by TF, EFD minus VF. Okay, by considering this equation and taking the derivative of this equation, I'll write DRF by DT will become KF by TF, DEFD by DT minus DVF by DT, right? So now if I'll substitute this, dvf by dt here in this equation 
it will become uh, drf by dt will be equal to vf by tf okay so it will just cancel out and it will finally drf by d2 will be equal to vs by tf okay so now if i'll substitute vf from this equation i'll just segregate vf or i write vf in terms of other terms other parameters then i'll substitute here then your drf by dt your rate feedback will equation will become tf into drf by dt will become equal to minus rf plus kf by tf eft so now this is your differential equation for the rate feedback okay with time constant and gain constant time constant is tf and gain constant is kf which we have de derived earlier right okay, now this is your equation now we can write the complete equation for for the voltage regulator for the exciter okay now this is your voltage regulator uh, equation right so ta dvr by dt will be equal to minus vr plus k vn so this vt vt is your terminal voltage minus vf vf is your feedback voltage which is coming from the rate feedback block right now if we we'll substitute v in here in this equation i'll find ta dvr by dt equal to minus vr plus k into v reference minus vt minus vf so we know vf is equal to kf by tf eft minus rf so by substituting here instead of vf just your equation will become ta dvr by dt equal to minus vr plus v reference minus vt vt is your terminal voltage of the generator this is your reference voltage plus k rf minus k kf by tf into eft and subjected to vr min less than vr less than vr max so now we know this is your rate feedback equation this is your complete equation for voltage regulator and this is your exciter equation right So now these three will combine together to give us the whole excitation modeling, right? Now these three equations: this is your voltage regulator equation, this is your rate feedback equation, this is your exciter equation, right? So these three equations combined will give us the model, or we can say the differential equation model of the exciter generator excitation system. okay this is all about the modeling of the exciter now if we we'll draw the block diagram of exciter of course here this is your voltage regulator okay voltage regulator having transfer function k by 1 plus st and output is vr and we have uh, this is a limiter with vr main and vr max and it is feeding <laughs> the input so input to the voltage regulator is v reference minus vt minus vf okay vf is your output of the feedback rate feedback right now your <coughs> voltage regulator is fed to the excitation system which is of course combined with k and the saturation function and 1 by st right so and the output of the exciter is efd which is being fed to the rate feedback okay through these two functions kf by tf by 1 plus stf and another function is kf by tf and finally we'll get vf which is being uh, here subtracted from the v reference so this is a block diagram of the excitation system right transfer function block diagram function block diagram of excitation dc excitation system okay there is i triple a dc1 dc1 a okay so okay so we'll stop here and
your excitation modeling is over and next class we'll see the modeling of turbine and governor okay so thank you very much for your kind attention thanks a lot